You know, last night I told my daughter Mia a bedtime story. Once upon a time, there was a big, beautiful bird, but he was sad because his home in the forest got burned down by a fire. Mia said, but dad, dad, where will the big bird go? Exactly, Mia. When its home is gone, where will the bird go? Where will my daughter be able to see the bird? Industrialization and modernization is a double-edged sword. As the technological revolution advances, the industrial civilization leads to not only economic growth, but also the degradation of the ecology. Today, the global environmental crisis may threaten about one million species with extinction, and many may be lost in a few decades if no action is taken. A civilization may thrive only if its natural surroundings thrive, and will suffer if its natural surroundings suffer. Recently, China has repeatedly stressed the protection of the ecological environment and biodiversity. The ecological environment is the basis for human survival and development, and its changes directly affect the rise and fall of civilizations. Against the background of economic globalization, should the beaten path of pollution first, rectification later be taken for future development? Or rather, economic growth be slowed down to prioritize ecological improvement? It is a tough question that every developing country is facing. In the longer term, eventually the damaged environment would jeopardize the economic growth or development and uh, coming back to negatively impact the human well-being. The notion was you, you have economic development and you don't have environmental development. Ah. And then the theory, uh, the environmental COSNET curve theory came out. You have economic development when you get to a certain point, $20,000 a year per capita income, you can begin to have the money to reduce the pollution. I think for the environmental issues, you really need a kind of public sector to intervene, mm. to start with. Otherwise, who cares about these common goods, right? Yeah, that's right. I think China could be cited as a good example of mobilizing the resources by setting the stage from the central government. That's somehow the world could learn. China is the leader, and the other countries are going to find it very difficult to lead. They can't lead. There is at least a few countries that are doing it correctly, and China's doing it on a scale. Where are the birds? Hey, birdie, 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 birdie. Don't be shy. Come on out. Oh, big bird, where are you? What's that? I think I found it. What's going on over there? Left, 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 left. Can I ask, what are you doing? What are you doing with these cranes? I'm在观赏一天它的状况，世界全球三千多只，我们就有哎。我们这个课呀，它是凭心情的，天气好了，环境好了。China has adopted a series of powerful measures as it actively explores a path of green development for thriving production, wealthy life, and improved ecology. Statistics show that China has a forested 7.07 .07 million hectares of land in 2018, making it the owner of the world's largest man-made forest. China's forest coverage rate has risen from 12.7% in the 1970s to 22.96% by the end of 2018, covering 220 million hectares of land with a forest growing stock volume of 17.56 billion cubic meters. The surface area and growing stock volume have grown continuously for over three decades, making China the country with the most considerable growth in forest resources in the world. In 2018, 
China's forestry industry had the total output value of about 1.1 trillion U.S. dollars, as its tertiary sectors increased by 19.28 percent year-on-year, while forestry import-export turnover reached 160 billion U.S. dollars. China's forestry-related tourism received over 1.6 billion visitors, generating nearly 220 billion U.S. dollars. NASA's uh, uh, satellite image calculated that China contributed to 25% of the world greening in the past decades. The situation is the efforts by all the sectors uh, combined, public and private and even individuals. I think that's also China's contribution to the world. One of the most striking things for me is an entity like McKinsey can come out about five, six years ago and say, Environmental remediation is a $41 trillion business. In America, there's less of an understanding that, in fact, this can actually stimulate economic growth rather than be a, a retardant to economic growth. A sound ecological environment is the commonest public benefit, and the quality of the ecological environment is key to an all-embracing, well-off society. Between 2013 and 2018, Within only six years, the initial introduction of PM2.5 monitoring to 74 Chinese cities saw a drop in the average PM2.5 concentration by 41.7%. Over the past few decades, the green area per capita continued to grow in China. By 2018, the green cover ratio of built-up areas in Chinese cities has leaped from 14.79% in 1981 to 37.9%, a 156% jump. By the end of 2020, China will have six national forest city clusters, 200 national forest cities, 360 national garden cities, and 20,000 forest villages and households. Ni hao, are you the captain of this boat here? Sir. Yeah? So, you mind if I ask you some questions? What were you doing before? We were in our house before. We were in our house. Then we could make money. We could make money outside. And I've experienced myself personally since 2015, there's been a 33% improvement mm -hmm. in air quality. UN Environment released a report that about the Beijing government in five years they were able to solve the air pollution problem. And the phenomenon is I, I perceive to be national in China, but certain key cities have, have made the most progress. And in other places, industrial development in the past that has damaged uh, air quality is, is not quite caught up to the more developed cities that are the focus, but those are the ones that are really showing the way. Now that China, together with New Zealand, were co-leading that work stream. And a lot of best practices demonstrated that while you're curbing kind of environmental problems, you could also improve your efficiency and also explore new potential for combating climate change, especially climate-induced uncertainties and disasters. And I think China is demonstrating that that is the case empirically. Not only do you have to have government leadership, you have to have a selfish uh, benefit for business. Industrial ecology is also a main body of greening in China. Today, environmental protection has become a new economic growth point. Statistics show that China's environmental protection industry generated about 230 billion US dollars turnover in 2018. In 2020, the total is expected to exceed 300 billion U.S. dollars. The environmental protection industry may be divided into four major areas. Water pollution prevention and control, air pollution prevention and control, solid waste processing and disposal and recycling, as well as environmental monitoring. They represent about 90% of environmental protection companies and account for 95% of the industrial revenue and profit. In 2018, the percentage of upgrading fossil fuel power stations to achieve ultra-low emissions has exceeded 80%, while coal use dropped from around 70% to 
Over 24 million used vehicles were removed, while an extensive national air quality monitoring network was built and 1,436 monitoring points set up. In 2020, China's environmental protection industry has established a new regulatory structure for water and soil conservation, which will enhance quality and effectiveness. Meanwhile, problems and challenges remain including an unsound management system for environmental quality goals, inadequate application of economic policies to the market, underperformance of ecological and environmental control. There are still challenges ahead, so the efforts need to continue. I think that's the good thing is that the Chinese government was aware of that new challenges coming up. We compared the fertilizer use efficiency between China and other developed countries. We found that China is lagged behind. The developed countries like US and Europe, they have a much higher fertilizer use efficiency rate. For example, 60% or 70% in China, nitrogen was 30 or 35%. They see the gap there. So there's always room for improvement for the standard technology. I'm not worried about the Chinese government losing focus. I'm just um, hoping that enough people outside of China can grasp the leadership that China is providing and that that becomes, without that, nothing will change. Climate change, environmental pollution and species extinction are the common threats facing mankind and have brought about grave socioeconomic consequences to every country around the world. Against such a background, China perseveres in green, low-carbon development, extensively participates in global environmental governance, firmly safeguards the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, and actively fulfills its promises and strengthens collaboration in a joint response to the challenges of climate change. As a nation with 1.4 billion people, China's pursuance of greening is a tremendous contribution to mankind. Its concepts of and experience in ecological construction serve as a major reference for the world's sustainable development. China calls on the people of all countries to work together to build a community with a shared future for mankind. If we think of planet Earth as a collective uh, nature treasure that we ha human have, and then other creatures also part of the family, and then we believe that the collective goods is a way that we can push. It was capable in the Chinese system of government, though in the West I, I find we talk about things. Uh, in China they talk about them and they do the things, and that's where I see the major global leadership coming from, filling a vacuum in the West. Hello, Mia? Hey, it's Dada. -da. Look, that's them. That's, remember the big bird I was telling you about? There it is. They're all here, right? Birds, animals, plants, all species share this biosphere. It's like a partnership. We are stewards of this planet, and I now see how we can all live in harmony, which is here among the clear waters and green mountains.